Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Arbitrator interview series for Arbitrator Intelligence Latin American Campaign 2021. My name is Araceli, and I am one of the Latin American ambassadors for Arbitrator Intelligence. Arbitrator Intelligence is a data analytics company focusing on promoting diversity, transparency, and accountability in arbitrator appointments. Today, we have Mr. Juan Fernandez Armesto. He is a professional arbitrator. He has been president of the Spanish Securities and Exchange Commission, partner of Uria Menendez, shared professor of commercial law, and founder of Armesto y Asociados. Mr. Armesto, thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Araceli, and... Uh... It's a pleasure being, it, it, it's a great uh, organization, Arbitrator Intelligence, and um, it does some very good things to international arbitration. And so I'm happy to be here with you. Thank you, Mr. Armesto. Could you tell us a little bit about your multicultural background? <laughs> well, um, it has to do with my parents. So it's all the merit goes to my parents. My father was a journalist. And he lived all his life uh, in different countries in the world. And so I was born in the States because my father was there. And then he moved, uh, the family moved to Germany. So I lived then quite uh, a long part of my youth in, in Germany. And uh, I went to school in Germany. And uh, yeah, German was my, basically my first uh, uh, language. Um, then eventually we came back when, when I was in my teens, we came back to Spain and uh, I still continued. Uh, I went to a German school, uh, was in a very German environment, met my wife, who is a German speaking Italian at school. Um, amazingly, we married and amazingly, we are still together, which is uh, quite a feat, uh, especially on her side. <laughs> um, and then I decided to study in Spain, but then I went back to Germany to write my doctoral thesis. Uh, so, yeah, you see uh, United States, uh, Germany, Spain. Uh, and the, the, the funny or nice thing is I really, I do not come from Madrid, uh, although I do live in Madrid. I come from the northwestern corner of Spain, which is called Galicia, which is very close to Portugal. And we speak a dialect of Portuguese, which has come very handy with our friends in Brazil and Mozambique and Angola and in Portugal, of course. And how did you get involved in international arbitration? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, I, 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 my background is banking law, uh, securities law, commercial law. And um, so that was my background. I did a, for many, many years. I was a professor. I wrote a, uh, I wrote a, a standard uh, treaty on banking law and investment law, securities investment law in Spain. And th th that was my main idea. And then when I came out of the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, so I left uh, the public uh, service, I said, mm, what shall you do? Do you want to go back to, uh, I wanted to go back to academia. That was clear to me, but did you really want to go back to, um, uh, to acting as a, as a lawyer in uh, banking and finance? And having been a, a supervisor, I somehow had some restraint. I thought, mm, maybe it's not the proper thing. Once you have been uh, the supervisor of the financial sector, you, you shouldn't go back to acting as a lawyer. So I said, what can I do? And really out of the blue, yeah, so at the beginning of this century, I said, mm, arbitration must be something nice. And yeah, but alone, uh, I didn't want to go back to my, to my former law firm. Alone, it's very complex. Uh, lawyers work so hard. I thought arbitrators work much less hard yeah? and it must be something nice. And so I decided that I wanted to become uh, a, an arbitrator and I decided I would only be an arbitrator and I would not accept cases as, as counsel. And that was really the, 
the, the, the unique. It, it was, uh, when I look back, it was, I think, um, advent, it was adventurous uh, decision uh, to, to decide at the beginning 20 years ago that I just wanted to survive as, a, as an arbitrator. I started, had very, very few cases in the beginning. I remember I had one year with two cases. Uh, I had six months with no new case. All cases were, of course, very, very small. And so I started. Uh, I started and after four years, there was a steady flow of cases. And then eventually, um, to my surprise, I ended up, maybe because I had been in, 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 in public service, uh, because I had a, a feeling how public administrations work, I ended up doing most cases with states. Uh, a lot of investment cases, a lot of contractual cases, a lot of work with states. States are special animals. And maybe I, having been part of a state, uh, helps, to, helps you to better understand their specialties. I completely understand. Uh, I also know that you have been a chair for numerous international arbitrations. Uh, how do you ensure efficiency during the proceedings being the chair of the tribunal? <sighs> yes, it's, it, each case is each case. So uh, some cases you really have to drive them forward huh? because why, uh, there is urgency in the matter. In bigger cases, sometimes the parties are not that interested in being very fast. They want to be efficient, of course, but often they, um, uh, the, the, the aim is more to succeed, to, to see justice done, more than to see it done very quickly. So it depends on, 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 on the situations. I try to minimize document production, which is always, I find it, that the effort and the result are not a good match. So I try to limit that. I encourage parties not to do document production, not with a lot of success to be very, I mean, I remember a case in a South American country where both council at the beginning said, no, 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 no. We don't want document production. Uh, then they said, well, we just want a little bit, you know, a couple of documents. And eventually we had a full-fledged American-style uh, document production. Um, uh, Council-like uh, document production. I find it, it tends to be inefficient. Uh, it takes up a lot of money, a lot of time, and the results in normal cases are not... Uh, not the, are not deal breakers, are not the basic for the adjudication. Um, I try to have only two submissions, one, not two rounds, but just one round of submission, two, two submissions. Uh, I never succeed with that. Yeah. I try to keep uh, uh, hearings as short as possible. Um, I sometimes succeed in, in making them uh, short, but very often parties insist that they want to have a full opportunity to present their case. So it, it is not so easy. Uh, it is not so easy um, to fight for short, fast, uh, uh, cheap uh, uh, international arbitration procedures. We, we, we must all do an effort, uh, starting with the arbitrators, but the, sometimes the cases, the big cases are not easy to, uh, to, 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 to achieve at the same time justice and efficiency. In your opinion, which is the most important feature that users in council must take into account when choosing an arbitrator? <laughs> trust, no, basically trust, um, trust, because it, it isn't amazing. I, I don't think, well, maybe doctors have something. When you go to a surgeon, you put your life uh, and the, the surgeon really 
decides on your life. Uh, when you put a dispute to, to, to an arbitrator, um, you basically trust him that he will do justice eh? and that he will listen uh, to the parties, understand the case and then do, do, do justice. So trust is, is, is fundamental. Uh, I would say trust, um, disclosure. Um, uh, I think you should look for arbitrators who, uh, who are very, very open in what they do, their relations, uh, the cases they have. And then I would recommend um, there is a tendency, uh, there is a tendency of going to the sacred cows uh, or the sacred bulls, uh, because they are mostly men. Uh. You mean the, the, the standard names, uh, because it's some, these names, everyone knows them, they have a track record. If you lose the case, uh, no one can say that you chose wrong. I would encourage parties to look more for uh, younger people, um, women, um, maybe with less experience, but uh, it is uh, surprising how good, independent, impartial, young arbitrators they are. So my recommendation is look outside uh, the uh, standard uh, uh, names and look for new talent. Which, of course, it goes against myself, but I think it's good for the system. Now that you're talking about trust and arbitrators being transparent, uh, in your experience and in your years as, as arbitrator, would you say there is enough transparency in arbitrator appointments? There is very insufficient uh, uh, transparency. And I have written on this. I'm, I, I will not say anything I have not actually written about. It's amazing how little information there is. Um, uh, investment arbitration is, is a little bit different, as is maritime arbitration, by the way. Uh, in these areas, it is, uh, there is more uh, transparency. But in commercial arbitration, it's still amazing. You do, it is very difficult to know uh, with whom with whom I have sat, with whom I sit, which cases I've had, um, which counsel appeared before me, what did what my decisions have been, uh, there should be full transparency. Eh? I'm trying to do, uh, I'm trying uh, uh, to do my best. I, I have a list in my web page with all my cases, and I have the name of my co-arbitrators, have the name of counsel. In commercial cases, I, of course, cannot put the name of the parties eh? because that is confidential. But at least I put the region, the type of parties, uh, Costa Rican company against Spanish bank, uh, um, uh, financial services agreement. And then I do put so that the parties at least know the council who is appointing me and the co-arbitrator, so they know with whom I'm sitting, so that parties can make themselves a picture of all my relationships. And to, they have a right to see if any of my relationships somehow makes them uneasy. I'm sure no party will think, no, uh, Armesto is, is, is not someone whom you cannot trust. But that is not a question. Uh, sometimes it is just the closeness, uh, um, the, the, the repeat uh, uh, sitting together with, or, or the repeat appointments, which may cause uneasiness. And parties have a right. Uh, they only, they choose their arbitrators. The arbitrators will take a decision. That decision can, on the merits, not be appealed. It's final and definitive. It's one shot. So you want to choose your pistol after having all the information of how the pistol works. 